Ever questioned how your cells know what to do? How they function, grow, and repair themselves? Well, the answer lies in nucleic acids. These aren't just any ordinary molecules. They are the very foundation of life as we know it. They carry the genetic blueprint that instructs cells on their roles and functions. Nucleic acids come in two types, deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, and ribonucleic acid, or RNA. DNA holds the master plan, the complete instructions for building every protein in an organism. RNA, on the other hand, is more like a messenger, carrying the DNA's instructions to the cell's protein-building machinery. Every function, every process in your body is driven by proteins, and it's the nucleic acids that ensure these proteins are made correctly. From the color of your eyes to your ability to digest food, it all comes down to these remarkable molecules. So nucleic acids act as the blueprint for life, guiding each cell's actions. Nucleic acids may seem complicated, but their structure surprisingly isn't. Now let's dive in to unpack that statement. Nucleic acids, as some of you may know, are the building blocks of life. They are the molecules that store, transfer and express our genetic information. And there are two types we need to talk about, DNA and RNA. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a double-stranded molecule, like a twisted ladder or a double helix. It's the blueprint, the master plan of an organism, containing all the instructions needed to build and maintain that organism. On the other hand, RNA, or ribonucleic acid, is usually single-stranded. Think of it as the messenger, carrying the instructions from the DNA to the rest of the cell, telling it what proteins to make and when to make them. Now let's break it down even further. DNA and RNA are made up of smaller units called nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of three parts, a sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose, whereas in RNA, it's ribose. The nitrogenous bases are where the magic happens. There are four types in DNA, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, often referred to by the first letters of their names, A, T, C, and G. RNA also has A, C, and G, but instead of thymine, it has uracil, or U. These bases pair up in a specific way, forming the rungs of our ladder or the steps of our helix. In DNA, A always pairs with T and C with G. In RNA, A pairs with U and C with G. These base pairs are held together by hydrogen bonds, forming a stable yet flexible structure. The sequence of these base pairs is what forms the genetic code, spelling out the instructions for life. So you see, the structure of nucleic acids isn't all that complicated. It's like a complex puzzle. But once you know how the pieces fit together, the picture becomes clear. Understanding this structure is key to understanding how nucleic acids work. These nucleic acids aren't just sitting idle. They have crucial biochemical functions. Let's dive right into the world of these biochemical superheroes. These nucleic acids are the maestros of the cellular orchestra, directing the symphony of life from their podium in the nucleus. One of their most critical roles is in protein synthesis. You see, proteins are the building blocks of life. They structure our bodies, regulate our bodily functions, and even fight off infections. But how do we get these proteins? Enter nucleic acids. They act as the blueprints guiding the cell in the creation of these vital proteins. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, carries the genetic instructions, while RNA, or ribonucleic acid, reads these instructions and assembles the proteins. It's like a well-coordinated dance, with nucleic acids leading the way. But the role of nucleic acids doesn't stop at protein synthesis. They are also essential for cell division. During this process, the DNA in a cell is replicated, ensuring that each new cell has a complete set of genetic material. This replication is what allows us to grow, heal, and even reproduce. Without nucleic acids, this wouldn't be possible. Nucleic acids also store and transfer genetic information. They act as the keepers of our genetic heritage, storing the information that makes us unique. This genetic code is passed down from generation to generation, shaping the traits we inherit from our parents. It's like a biological time capsule, carrying the story of our ancestry within our cells. Furthermore, nucleic acids are also involved in energy transfer. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is a nucleic acid that acts as a sort of energy currency for the cell. It stores and releases energy as needed, powering the countless reactions that keep us alive and kicking. In essence, nucleic acids are the unsung heroes of our cells. They guide protein synthesis, enable cell division, store and transfer genetic information, and even help power our bodies. 
They might be microscopic, but their impact on life is colossal. So nucleic acids are the workhorses of the cell carrying out vital functions. What makes nucleic acids truly fascinating is their ability to replicate, transcribe and translate. Let's start with replication. Simply put, replication is the process by which a cell makes an exact copy of its DNA. This is crucial because it allows for the growth of new cells and the repair of damaged ones. Now here's where it gets interesting. This process begins when an enzyme called DNA helicase unzips the two strands of DNA like separating the two sides of a zipper. After the strands are separated, another enzyme called DNA polymerase gets to work. It reads the sequence of the original strand and creates a complementary strand matching A with T and C with G. This ensures that each new cell gets an identical copy of the DNA. Now let's move on to transcription. This is the process of creating a complementary RNA strand from a DNA template. Think of it as taking a snapshot of a specific gene. This snapshot in the form of messenger RNA or mRNA is then used as a blueprint to create proteins. The enzyme RNA polymerase is the star of this show. It binds to the DNA at the start of a gene, unzips a small section, and then proceeds to create a corresponding mRNA strand. Finally, we come to translation. This is where the mRNA created during transcription is used as a template to build a protein. The mRNA leaves the nucleus of the cell and heads to the ribosome, the cell's protein factory. There, transfer RNA or tRNA molecules carry the appropriate amino acids to the ribosome based on the sequence of the mRNA. These amino acids are then linked together in the ribosome to form a protein. This is essentially the cell taking that snapshot of the gene and turning it into a three-dimensional object. The importance of these processes cannot be overstated. They are the basic mechanisms by which our cells function and our genetic information is passed on. Through replication, our cells can divide and grow. Through transcription and translation, our cells can create the proteins that are essential for life. And what's truly mind-blowing is that these processes are happening right now inside every single one of your cells. Billions of times a day, your cells are replicating their DNA, transcribing genes into mRNA, and translating that mRNA into proteins. All of this just to keep you going. So, the next time you're feeling a little down, just remember you're not just a person, you're a marvel of biological processes, a symphony of replication, transcription and translation. These processes are the reason our cells can function and we can pass traits to our offspring. Now let's decode the genetic code of a eukaryotic cell. It's a fascinating journey that takes us into the heart of our very existence. The genetic code is a set of rules, a map if you will, that guides how information in genes is converted into proteins, the building blocks of life. Picture this, the genetic code is like a language with its own alphabet words and grammar. In this language the alphabet consists of four nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. These nucleotides pair up to form base pairs, which are like the words in this language. Now these words are read in groups of three, a concept known as codons. Each codon corresponds to a specific amino acid or a signal to start or stop protein synthesis. This is the grammar of our genetic language. And just like any language, it's all about the right sequence. A different arrangement of these base pairs can lead to entirely different proteins being produced. So how is this code read? It's a process called translation, where the genetic code in the mRNA is converted into an amino acid sequence in a protein. This process involves a variety of molecules, including ribosomes, which are like the translators, reading the mRNA and synthesizing the corresponding protein. This genetic code plays a crucial role in determining the characteristics of an organism. It's the reason why a rose is a rose and not a daisy, why an elephant is an elephant and not a mouse. But it's not just about species. Even within a species, it's what makes each individual unique. The genetic code of a eukaryotic cell is like a language that our cells understand, enabling them to function and interact. It's a language of life, written in the heart of our cells, guiding the symphony of biological processes that make us who we are.